I said wearing frontals makes you look dumb. I am talking to you. Most of you are so ashamed to show your own head. <laughs> And y'all don't sleep well at night because you're trying to sleep a certain way so your beautiful frontals do not crack open in the middle of the night it is 2 30 in the morning and i cannot sleep i do not know how you girls be sleeping with wet i'm struggling like i actually can't do this orin for shaggy multi say anything because giving your own cut off circulation this is like your sentence all that struggle for what to look like someone else you look dumb the more stupid you are ew hair is incredible personal and i think i speak for everybody i just want to wear their hair without being constantly asked why you decided to wear it in an afro why you decided to wear it in a wig why you decided to wear it in breads i understand there's a lot of insecurities that come from this topic and the choices that people make but it's not always the case i came across this post of this veteran nigerian actor that had this to say about people wearing wigs it says taiwa ajel listen has taken a swipe at african women who wear wigs to augment their beauty saying it is a sign of low self-esteem she opined that god has blessed african women with the best hair of all races and wondered aloud why african women would rather go for human hair of less endowed races we have been blessed with the best kind of hair that can transform into any kind of look we desire we have to love ourselves as africans and appreciate our god-given beauty our africanness is what stands us out among all the races of the world the african woman is beautiful in all ramifications i believe women who go for wigs and human hair have low self-esteem their desire to look Western and foreign is a sign of loss of esteem, she said. The actress also emphasized the importance and role of women in society, asserting that women are the source of life and creation. I actually agree with what she just said. The only thing I would change is probably the fact that this message should be directed to people that choose every single time, constantly choose to wear hair that isn't theirs over their hair every single time. I feel like that can be an indication of something wrong. There's something wrong with me, Linus. And that's when you see people depressed over not having their hair done, which just means to them not having on a wig or braids. Have you heard of hair depression? Like when your hair gets sad and deflates? More so when you get depressed because your hair looks bad. Oh. And I've seen multiple girlies talk about, you know, I'm just having one of those days because my hair is not together. Really? Yeah. This girl literally said, I'm out of my hair depression. Oh. <laughs> she was like, I finally got my hair done. Mm -hmm. And I feel like myself again and I feel better. You can take weeks off. You can take the frontals off. And then you're left with your hair. Your hair is your crown that you never take off. Never. Most of you are so ashamed to show your own hair because it's damaged. Most Nigerian women have traction alopecia. Like the, the, the edges, the edges, it's all gone. There's nothing here. Because you are so obsessed with wigs and frontals. I have never worn a frontal in my life. And I would never put glue on my on, on my skin to glue in that's the height of it for me i wear wigs because you know my job most producers will not allow you use your natural hair i understand you know the closure wigs that you can wear and take off what i will not understand in my life till i die are those frontals that you guys put glue on your hair and you're, you're trying to the, it's the struggle for me. I see all the struggle and I just shake my head. I just shake my head. Oh, you, you, you wear the band and then you pick it, you pluck it, you do this, you put the melting spray, you do this. All that struggle for what? To look like someone else? It's stupid to me. I am sorry, but you guys look dumb AF. You look dumb. Like, miss me with all that. You will never find intelligent African women doing that. Never. You will never find a Chimamanda Adichie in a frontal. You will never find a Genevieve Naji in a frontal. You will never find an Okonji Iwala wearing a frontal. These are people who have self-worth these are people who have self-respect all that struggle for what and i'm sure these people will sit down these white people and they're laughing at us like oh they want to be us so bad they want to look like us so bad and that's why they will never respect black people 
Because y'all do dumb shit like this. Take care of your own hair all the time. And these people claim they don't have time to grow their own hair. They see you taking care of your hair and they're like, ah, oh, I don't have all the time. But you have all the time to do all those dumb shit. Guys, take care of your own hair. It's all you've got. It's your identity. So amazing, I just want to throw this in because then what she just said about her producers not being able to allow her to wear her natural hair and the African entertainment industry all together. I understand this, I'm saying why characters may need to wear a wig for particular roles. What I don't understand though, especially in African movies, is the constant association of natural hair to being, I don't know, stupid. Nine times out of ten, the girl with natural hair is always going to be the loud one in the room, the person that is desperately in need of a partner and just probably just working as a maid or something, or maybe the tomboy that is so aggressive and has no manners whatsoever. It's almost like they made it a requirement for the girls in these roles to only wear the natural hair. Yeah, guys. When you're done um, cleaning, make dinner for four. When you're done, please go upstairs. Don't come out, okay? We're having important guests. I hope you understand. Yes, ma'am. Once they begin to act right, and once they're finally loved by this rich guy, all of a sudden, a wig is bestowed upon them. Like a graduation cape or something. And all of a sudden, this character has some decency and some level of self-worth. I understand having to portray a poor character as one that only wears a natural hair because obviously they cannot afford the wigs. But why do they always have to be insufferable as well? So they're literally contributing to the problem. In two minutes that you want to come on here and complain about how nobody wants to wear their natural hair when you are constantly associating it with such dumbness. And when I say that, I don't necessarily mean her. I mean everybody else that is involved in the production, everybody else writing these scripts and writing these women as such. And the worst part about this whole thing is that from ideation to production to release of the movie, the people that are working in between are people that look exactly like me. So why the heavens are you so comfortable with portraying yourself like that? Anyway, back to the rest of the video. You people know the people I'm talking to, but you just want to you just want to type to make yourselves feel good, right? I am talking to you that has no issues whatsoever, healthy with healthy hair follicles, but you choose to suppress your own God-given hair to glorify something that you cannot naturally grow. You choose to put glue on it and it's the struggle right this it's it's so funny to me how you guys try all your best to make it look like it's coming out of your scalp but one look and we all know that that's not your hair so the more natural the frontal looks the more stupid you are because it, it looks like you put in more effort just to look stupid it's how y'all are proving me right in this comment section for me i said wearing frontals makes you look dumb and some people are coming for me like oh so why do you have lipstick on why do you have makeup on like why don't you be natural since you want to be natural you're a hypocrite and all that guys come on first of all i don't even have a problem with you wearing wigs the closure wigs that you wear and just take off you know as you like you can wear your wigs for all i care what the problem is is the frontals those ones that you have to put glue on your forehead to glue in that's the dumb shit i'm talking about that shit makes you look dumb seriously and secondly since when did wearing lipstick make you look non-african like i don't understand is wearing makeup is makeup peculiar to any continent Africans have been wearing makeup since the days of our forefathers. This is what wearing frontals does to you guys. It takes away your intelligence. And then some others are saying, oh, you can get your message across without insults, without being insultive and abusive. Excuse me, how is it an insult when it's a fact? When it's pure, undiluted fact? How is it an insult? It's like catching an arm drubber and you tell him, oh, you're a thief. And he says, oh, no, don't insult me. Like, duh, you are a thief. You are just being caught stealing. So how is it like how is it an insult it's not an insult when it's a fact it's a fact no intelligent african woman will put glue on her head on her forehead to glue in a hair that she cannot personally and naturally grow it's a fact <laughs> and i hear that y'all don't even sleep well at night no like seriously i heard that that y'all don't sleep well at night because you're trying to sleep a certain way so your beautiful frontals do not crack open in the middle of the night like seriously cheers to those of us who sleep beautifully in the night knowing that our hairs are well secured in our scalps and won't pop up in the middle of the night ew 
Her delivery may be a little bit harsh, but she's not entirely wrong. Traction of the picture is a huge insecurity when it comes to wearing our natural hair. And for some reason, there's an association to poverty for everybody that chooses to wear only their natural hair. It's always assumed that you cannot afford wigs. And people that care about opinions like that end up wearing wigs back to back just to prove to the village people that they now can afford them. And for others, it's more so that they've been wearing wigs for such a long time that they don't know how to feel confident in anything else but a wig. Am I the only one who feels the most confident in wigs and weaves? And I honestly, for a long time, was scared to even like have this opinion or say it out loud because I felt like people would accuse me of being anti-black or accuse me of not liking my natural hair. And it's not that I don't like my natural hair. It's just growing up, like my natural hair was always protected. My natural hair was always hidden or covered or under something. So I've just grown up loving wigs and loving weaves but it's gotten to a point where braids don't even do it for me twists don't even do it for me like i feel like the baddest and the most beautiful and the most gorgeous when i have a wig or a weave okay just a quick disclaimer on what we're not gonna do what we are not going to do is drag this beautiful black woman for actually having the balls to sit up here and speak her truth do you understand it's not what this is now i've cleared that up she said something in there and it speaks volumes to the problem that we're all facing. It's so profound. I don't even think she realized. Growing up, like my natural hair was always protected. My natural hair was always hidden or covered or under something. So I've just grown up loving wigs and loving weaves. It ain't nothing more than a habit. That's all this is, guys. It's habitual. We've learned these behaviors. Think about people out there that smoke, drink, even as far as to say do drugs. These are habits. These are things that they did over and over and over again. And as a result, they built up an addiction in them where they feel like they can't live without that thing. Now, when these people decide, hey, I'm done, I'm over it, and they want to wean themselves off whatever habit they've created for themselves, they usually have a treatment plan in place. Maybe they'll have like an actual professional guiding them through it. And of course, these things I've made reference to, they have big medical impacts if you do not stop. And sometimes if you do, so they do require that level of support most of the time to get that person to stop. Are some habits worse to crack than others? Yes, of course. But the fact is, a habit's a habit's a habit right? They're all pretty difficult for that individual. But it's funny because when you think about somebody that, for example, has built up sometimes 15, 20, 30, 40 years of wearing a wig and they decide, I'm going to kick it. There's no treatment plan for them. <laughs> There's oftentimes no support, no professional guidance, nobody holding their hand through the process. And as such, they fall back into it. Now, am I going to sit up here and try to correlate taking your wig off and getting used to wearing your natural hair to, I don't know, weaning yourself off some kind of class A drug. <laughs> no. But can we please be honest and fix our mouths to talk about the psychological impacts, the emotional trauma and the shaken sense of self that comes with changing your entire aesthetic and removing potentially, sadly but truthfully, one of the only things that has made you feel beautiful in your entire life. It may not be a crack addiction, but listen to me. Support is required. And I don't think as a community, we've really worked out a framework for that. Not yet. A lot of us, including me, had to be alone, shedding those tears quietly and fighting those battles privately to be able to get to this place. And it was fucking hard. I petition anybody out there who understands the importance of what I am talking about and has the capacity and the resource to do so, to look at ways that we can maybe work together. I am here for it and create a course, a safe place, some kind of six week, eight week, I don't know, something where if one of our sisters says, I'm done, I can't do this anymore. And they have fear in their spirit because they haven't got a clue on what to do next and fear that they won't have the support, the guidance, the affirmation and the knowledge of their natural hair to stick it out, that they can use this, whatever it is, as a resource. I honest to God think that that would be something that would change lives and I will put my whole weight behind that. And if it already exists, tell me, tell me now and I will share it up and down the internet. Something's got to be done. 
There are so many reasons why black people in general, not just Africans, gravitate towards wig. It's not always centered around self-esteem. Or maybe it is, but you still have to ask why. See, in addition to all of these reasons I've already given, wigs are also thought to be the best protective styles ever. And while they're good for length retention, they can also be the reason why you end up neglecting your hair altogether. Or you end up with long hair, but with a receding hairline. And as somebody that has traction and lipisha myself, I'm not trying to say that everybody else that has traction and lipisha now made a dumb choice and therefore end themselves at stupid price. All I'm saying is be honest with yourself and really take time to reassess whenever wearing a wig begins to feel like something you can't live without. Hi, my name's Angelica. And I have traction alopecia. This came from wearing wigs. Now I've managed to grow my natural hair. It was really short. I can put pictures as an overlay for you to see. And now it's somewhere here. But because I have traction alopecia, I can't grow my natural hair out. Not as much as I would want to. I can't even begin to tell you the feelings of insecurity I get if, you know, I, I get this feeling or the sense that anyone's going to see my natural hair. It's the worst feeling ever and I've put in a lot of work in growing out my natural hair but I still feel like I'm in this prison. And because wigs did this to my hairline, I can only now just wear wigs. And the few times that I would have to have my natural hair out, I start to panic about how I'm going to cover this extreme receding of my hairline as you can see my hair starts all the way in here right in there all of this thinned out or barely any hair there whatsoever and it goes around the nape of my head all the way or the crown of my head all the way here this side is not as bad not as bad as this side I'm in my early 20s, so to be experiencing this is just, it's terrible. As you can see in my profile picture, that is my hair when it's obviously covered. So I decided to make this account to try different things, like this thing that I made, to see if I can help myself to sort of put my hair back or give me a hairline again so that most importantly I can feel confident as a 4C natural hair woman and you know just feel extremely confident in my own hair and not feel like I need to hide it and wear wigs just because this is something that I'm suffering and dealing with. This is me, my story, my struggle of traction alopecia and hopefully I can figure out a way to restore my hairline back and my confidence and just exp experience my dream, my number one dream of being able to actually just go out with my natural hair and feel that sense of confidence, that sense of beauty, that sense of I did that and I am here and I've arrived and just that feeling of just being complete when it comes to me personally i feel like the choice of your wig or whatever you decide to put on your head is really up to you but i hope you're honest enough with yourself to know why you're choosing one hairstyle over the other is it really about convenience does gluing down a wig take less time than just doing your hair wigs whether natural looking or not are not really the problem it's how you feel without them that i'm most concerned about because believe it or not your hairstyle choices will always affect your self-esteem if you feel like you don't look any better without anything on than a wig you will always feel depressed until you get a wig our hair side choices can begin to affect our self-esteem when you begin to feel like you need a wig for every occasion Ooh, look at you right. you're doing it you and know what i'm gonna do with this i'm putting my favorite it. little place say right here no bada bada bing <laughs> do not so you see that's what happened to you yeah no it, it's this side it's my right side so this is like if you move the hair it's nothing here behind and so this part has been bald since i was 17 like you can feel my skin here and then this side just is thin just from all the years of braids and ponytail so that completely started an insecurity tragedy yeah take a minute and look at yourself <laughs> no
No. Mm-mm-mm. Just I, my hand just it's like a magnet. It does this. Like, I want to cover it. I just No. Yeah. No, why? You want to feel attractive and you want to feel, you know, and I do not. I know a lot of people can relate to that probably at different times in our lives. I just hope that we can be able to move past that and realize that wigs are a good thing to have, but not necessarily a must have.